show that at some point in time, if it does expand, it seems like it's moving somewhat to the south. Is that correct? It most certainly is moving to the south. Okay. Do you think that we ever get to a point of being able to break into Bay Point itself? Grand Bayou, Bayou Point, either one of them. Yeah, either one of them. Right now, because the sinkhole is starting to develop this elongate shape, and what's happening is it's following the edge of the salt to the south. And if we could show you the pictures, you would see where the sinkhole is expanding now is right above the deep, disturbed rock zone that Don Marlin just talked about. And we think that's why it's growing to the south. Look at the, the overflight videos, the, the last one. You look to the trees to the south, and the south burn gets into dead trees now. Yeah. But what it's doing now is following the edge of the salt. To answer your first question, the Itasca boys are back recalculating what we thought the maximum diameter could be because it's no longer circular, it's elongated. And that, that, that's, that's my number, and I'm not sticking to it, okay? Uh, this probably isn't going to be a real satisfying answer, but right now we need to figure out a better way to get the gas out than drilling wells every 50 feet. Okay, that's obvious. And what what's going on right now? Respec is trying an enhanced vacuum extraction method to remove additional gas. But I can assure you that the vent well performance is near the top of the list of everything else we're dealing with. We have to get better wells out there that remove more gas and are more effective. Here, here's an idea for you. These wells appear to be unable to produce gas from my layman's perspective because you've got too much water going into the case. Yeah, well, if, oh, just a minute. If that's true, why not convert the wells to water wells and then use relatively low-tech degassing uh, procedures to get the gas out of the water and then re-inject the water back into the aquifer since you haven't done anything except take gas out? Yeah, you're, you're talking basically a coal bed methane well, and that's one of the designs we're looking at. We're How often do you keep looking? And why haven't these suggestions come up until we ask questions? It's always, you're going to do, you're going to do, you're going to do. Are we getting anywhere? Are you getting anywhere? It's it, it's pretty difficult to see a lot of rosy pictures right now. I, no, no, I, I I do not have a crystal ball to tell you what's going to happen in a year. I'm sorry. Okay, you, I, I can't make up answers that I don't know. What do you mean I, I didn't tell you how much? Yes, I did. Okay. 
five in the aquifer, it's almost a balance. If that's already moved out. That doesn't mean anything to us. We <coughs> need to understand what you're saying. Okay, I just told you the bottom line that we're in for a long haul process. You've been telling us that for a year. Right. It's been a year now. That's right. And it's going to be many more years. What I just heard you say is that the gas wells that we're operating, of which we have 40, aren't going to get the job done. I don't see how they will. Well, so so the, best, the best means of this whole thing is that Texas Brine step up, buy the people out that are willing to negotiate and get a settlement and get out of here, and then settle with the people who want to stay because as we understand Mother Nature is going to fix this thing when she gets ready and what you're going to do is make sure that uh, the, the gas stuff gets out of here at some point in time and protect our environment. We're working to try to understand the problem. People are frustrated. You can get mad at me. I understand your frustration. I wish I had better answers, but I'm not going to lie to you when I don't think I've got the answers. We are in for a long haul. Okay? Now, as for the home buyouts and stuff, that's a personal decision each person's going to have to make. So what that tells us is that you know, you ask where does that put you? Which, you know, all we can do, and we said we were going to rely on the experts and their best opinion. But these experts telling us that they think it can be years with bubbling gas, small trace can hit of H2S, whatever else. From a parish's perspective, evacuation is going to remain in place until that's resolved. So what, we, what, what I'm hearing you say, what we're trying to say is that you could be very well on evacuation into the next year, two or three years. Well, the temporary living. I mean, this is temporary. This is the I think permanent. I want permanent to be taken away. This is not an evacuation. It, it, it's almost a, a relocation. You know, to be honest with you, you know, somebody on evacuation for this amount of time, and potentially at that amount of time, I, I'm just being honest with you. The people ask me, you know, I get called routinely. You know, I hear this, the evacuation may be lifted. I'm hearing this, hearing that. Based upon these types of uh, opinions and, and forethoughts and what their best opinions are at the time, I don't see any, any immediate end to it from the parish perspective as far as the art is concerned. I want you to hear my life already. I can't afford to bear this anymore. I would like to say stop the science project until the people are bought out. At a fair price, not something you can't replace your home for. And, and, I, and I can't, I, I can't comment one way or the other. You can get right and right. From our perspective, we, we can't, yeah, we can't. The seismic stuff has not helped a bit. It didn't work. So. We can ask Texas Brian to have some officials to comment to the extent they want to comment in a minute after we finish this presentation, but I agree with you. But to answer your question, your question is, you know, where does that put us? We need to make decisions based upon what we're hearing and what we've been told for quite some time, and at least as this thing evolves, I don't think we're in a position to make any adjustments to the evacuation order, and it could be there for a long time. So, you know, if, if, if you're saying you need to make decisions and, and preparations, we give you our best estimate. Now, as far as what, what other situations, they can comment to the extent they want to comment. They're here, and we will ask them to make comments after this, after this presentation. I want to ask one more question. Then I know Don, Mr. Dr. Marlin, we ask some questions, and we want to get to this stuff, but then we let him kind of finish up with kind of the other issues he wanted to say. Yeah, well, the players losing their rate that they are venting at. I mean, usually when you pass by the player, they were up and jumping big, and now, I mean, they look like a candle burning. Y'all had some discussion about, you know, being able to operate more efficiently and all, and it, it looks like maybe that they're just not doing that. Well, the, the
the flares are doing okay, it's the wells aren't producing the gas to the flares that they were a couple months ago. So the reason it looks like a tiny flame, there just isn't much gas going to the flare anymore. So does that mean there's less gas or it's not moving? In some places there's less gas. There, there have been all kinds of operational issues with the vent wells too. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I had a new map. We, we've got a pretty thick gas body, unfortunately, under the community. Well, in the back, we don't have a lot of data. I can tell you one of the thickest gas uh, intervals that we've seen over there is one of the wells that was put in uh, by the boat dock. Yeah. We do have gas in the back of BC2, which is a well that's behind the wooden fence. That one has had very steady pressure since it was put in last year. We'll let Mr. Mall and Dr. Mall and finish. I have to correct that, Marty. Thank you for the honor of the yeah. offer. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm very much thankful for that. And one of my old professors here, and he's going, where did you get that degree? <laughs> there you go. That's my professor. That's my... <laughs> Thank you, Marty. Um, just two more quick items, because we jumped around and covered a lot of the issues that I was going to talk about. The other things that you read in the, uh, the PDF or the online report, wherever it goes out, will be about the big hum reservoir, or the old well bore that was drilled in, back in 1986 and produced in 2001, abandoned in 2010 by the state. Um, that well was supposed to have an anomaly on the 2007 data set. My latest work on this is that it's a false anomaly caused by a rock above where the well produced. So we don't, I don't think that that is a very good culprit for the hydrocarbons coming to the sinkhole. So that's a summary of that. And there's some illustrations for that also that you'll see. And then finally, uh, I am doing some reprocessing of the seismic data set. Just like you would get a second opinion from a doctor, from a market analysis, from a financial analyst, to make sure that we have an independent review of the seismic. I'm having a, a worldwide group of geophysicists in Houston do the reprocessing of this data. We have experts in the area of every aspect of seismic processing. And I'm trying to enhance the look of the salt, trying to enhance the look of the disturbed rock zone, enhance the look of this disturbance zone underneath the sinkhole, and also enhance and refine the gas culprits that are against the salt. And the preliminary work that I've shown, or I've done so far, is that I have done that. It's narrowly defining where that salt is. Not that it's going to move any, but everything is becoming clearer. It's almost like I see a red car in the distance, but now I know it's a red Camaro. So that's, that's what I'm seeing with this new work. And it's not new computer work. It's new proprietary algorithms for seismic processing. And I apologize, I'm not beating around the bush. I'm being as direct as I can, hitting every aspect of this and wrestling with this project. Um, my dictate has been to understand the subsurface, interpret the seismic, and help CBNI and DNR understand where this gas is coming from. And I see some gas that possibly be, could be liberating itself to the sinkhole and into the aquifer, and I'm trying to put some sort of, not, uh, you know, some volume to it, some actual uh, physical numbers to it, so that they can take a look at this, the Blue Ribbon Commission, and give you a better idea of how long it's going to take to mitigate this problem. And I want to just reiterate, anybody who looks at this, toss me out of the room, bring another guy into it, it's hard to understand, hard to control, and hard to predict. And I think that you even said that about the sinkhole widening. It's not a definitive answer right now, but I'm doing the best I can for you.